Happy Saturday. I want to answer a question for you today. What will heaven be like according to the Bible? Now, I'll, I don't profess to know much about heaven. But I do know a little bit about it because there's a little bit about it written in the Bible. So I'm going to go over some of that with you today to give you an idea of what to expect. It's going to be wonderful. It's the exact opposite of hell. The Bible is a book of exact opposites. Good and evil. Jesus and the devil. Blessings and curses. Heaven and hell. Exact opposites. As wonderful as heaven is, hell is exactly the opposite. So horrible. Even Stephen King and those people could not begin to write about it because they don't have the imagination to depict how horrible it's going to be. Just like I don't have words to describe how wonderful it's going to be. There are not words in any language that will describe how wonderful heaven heaven is. It's wonderful. Say this with me on this happy Saturday. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Call me today if you need your prayers answered. Make sure you call me today if you did your offerings and donations and your tithe yesterday, because yesterday was offering day. Or if you do them today. Or if you did them during the week. But make sure that I get a chance to speak the blessing over you when you do your offerings and donations. I want to bless you anyway. Monday's blessing day. But I want to especially bless you with your offerings because that's how the Jewish people do it. They go to synagogue, they bring their tithe, and the rabbi speaks the blessing over them. And 85% of them live in abundance because they receive it. They have faith for that. You develop faith for that and your whole life will change. Amen? What will heaven be like? Hit the like button. Speaking of being like, hit the like button uh, if you're watching these on YouTube. And make sure that you invite your friends to our Facebook group. Amen. You may save somebody's life. If you know somebody who's sick and broke, have them call me. I'll take care of them. Once they call me, their problems become my responsibility. I'll take care of them. I'll use the power in the name of Jesus to do it. Revelations chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. You know, the thing about heaven, now hold your place here, and go back to Genesis. I want to share something with you that I don't know that too many people have ever seen this. But it says, it says here, that God planted a garden east of Eden. And uh, he, gave, he gave the people dominion. And he, he formed people of the ground and he blessed them and told them that they could eat everything except for the tree of good and evil. And, uh, and he planted a garden. Now, it tells us that in the Bible here. In verse 8 of chapter 2. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the person he had formed. Now, the question is, I want you to 
think about this for just a second. If God, if God planted a garden, where did he get the seeds? Where did the seeds come from for the garden? Did he create the seeds in his hand when he was here on the earth? Because, you know, we see in Genesis chapter 3 that God went back and forth. That's his whole purpose to, for people. He wants to go back and forth. He's going to do that again. But when he planted the garden, where did the seeds come from? Did he create the seeds in his hand? Or did he bring the seeds with him from heaven? I don't know. I honestly do not know. I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven. When you planted the Garden of Eden, where did you get the seeds? God will tell me. This garden was so wonderful. There was... His people were created so perfect, they were never meant to die. After Adam sinned, it took him 930 years to die because his body was created so perfect. We were never meant to die. Your spirit inside you right now will never die. You're not going to go to sleep. Ever. When you die, when your body dies, your spirit is going to come out and go one of two places. It will either go to heaven or it will be incarcerated in jail. Heaven is more wonderful than I can describe and hell is more horrible than anybody can describe. Somebody said at one time that if you would take a person, any person, tie a rope around them, lower them into hell, leave them there for two minutes, pull them out, they wouldn't stop screaming for six months. I can imagine that's how horrible it is. Heaven, on the other hand, is so wonderful that the people who have died on the operating table or in accidents and stuff and came back from being in heaven of which there are some that are, we had a man in our church that happened to. And he said, he described it as being more, one, so it's, it was just incredible to be there, he said. He did not have words to describe it. It was so wonderful. The exact opposite. But he came back. Now he went back again, so he's there now. He wanted to go back. He wanted to go back. Heaven is a wonderful place. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down. Jerusalem, the new city, is coming down. It's going to be on this earth. You know, the Lord showed me a vision one time. After Brother Hagen died, he was our mentor. The father of the Word of Faith movement. We went to Bible school there. We knew him. We met him. We were in his classes. We didn't really have a relationship with him because nobody did. But he was there among us. Everybody was so blessed to have him there. And the Lord showed me what happened to Brother Hagen when he died. I will tell you about that someday. But it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I, I will describe what happened to Kenneth Hagin when he died. Mm -mm -mm. And God shall wipe away the tears from their eyes. And there'll be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Hmm? No more death, no more crying, no more sorrow. Do you know that if your loved ones don't go to heaven, when you get to heaven, you won't even remember them. 
That's the only way God could make sure there's no sorrow in heaven. Because if you got there and found out your loved ones didn't make it, you would be full of sorrow. But you're not going to be. There will be no sorrow. It's so wonderful. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write this down, for these words are true and faithful. And he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is thirsty the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he will be my people. You're going to live for eternity in incredible bliss and harmony. A life that is just full of abundance, full of everything you need and love and fellowship and people who care about you and a loving Jesus who wraps his arms around you. That's what heaven's going to be like. There's a lot I don't know about it, but the little bit I do know, I can't wait to be there. Share this video with everybody you know. Make sure you call me today if you need your prayers answered. There's a special anointing here to get your prayers answered and to break these curses and speak the blessing over you. Don't miss out on this. Don't miss out on this. As long as I'm here, nobody needs to be sick or broke. Make sure you take advantage of it. How long I'm going to be here, I don't know. I think a long time. Because there's so many people that need to be blessed. I will be here until God calls me home. The devil will never steal me away from people. Never. Because I won't permit it. I will use the power in the name of Jesus to keep him out of my life and yours. Huh? Heaven's going to be a wonderful place. You're going to rejoice with God and with all of his people. Call me and get your prayers answered. Call me if you're sick or broke. Call me when you do your offerings and donations. I'm always here. This is the only ministry in the country where the minister actually answers the phone and will get results for you. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. I love you and I care about you. And I'll see you back here on Monday.